What if losing was actually winning? What if less was actually more? What if your renewal started with removal? Thank you, buddy. Hello, everyone. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Come on, let me hear you. If you're excited to be in God's house or tuning into God's house, at least. Come on, drop a comment if you're watching online. If you're excited to be able to listen to a message from the Word of God without coming out and without getting out of your pajamas, say amen online. But everybody in house is like, I'm still in my pajamas. What are you talking about? Everybody on the park, everybody in the grass is saying, man, I'm in my pajamas still. It's all good, and it is all good. Come as you are, like we say. I got a quick question for you before we get started. How many of y'all been really sick before? Anybody been really sick? Anybody online been really sick before? Uh, I know that's like kind of something that a lot of us are thinking about. I personally have been so sick. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, I had such a high fever, I was actually hallucinating. I don't know if any of you have ever been there. It's really rough. I think my temperature is about 105, and it's like why I'm so funny now <laughs> is because I've been through some things. But I rem if you've ever had a fever that high, you know that uh, stuff like that can happen. It's kind of like boiling you up there. But my mom, she's so sweet. She's probably watching I love you, mama. I do. I love you so much. And do you remember this, mom, when you, I, I was asking for stuff. I don't remember it too well, but what I remember is that I wanted like this toy gun. You know, they like sold little toys at the gas station and it would, viz, 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 like the more you pulled the, viz, viz, viz. Viz, viz, viz. Any, no, okay. Um, I really liked it though when I was a kid and I, I wanted that thing, you know, that thing was going to make me feel better, you know. So my mom, being a loving, kind mother that she is, watching her son bake to death in his own temperature, she comes back with, from the gas station, and I'm, I'm in my room. It's dim. You know, it's not dark. It's dim. I can still see a little bit, but it's, I can, and my mom, I can, and I was hallucinating to the point where it felt like it was in fast forward, like she was coming in, and she looked like a monster. I was so scared, mom. I don't know if I ever told you that, but it was really, really bad. And if you've ever been sick like that, or anywhere near that, maybe you haven't been sick like that, but you've been sick enough to know that all, when you're sick to a point, all you can think about is getting better. All you can think about is the cure. All you can think about is what do I need to do to get myself well, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about a sickness. We're going to talk about a cure. Today, we're going to talk about a sickness that we're all born with, though. A sickness that we're all born with. And a cure is available for anybody who wants it. But before that, before we get into it, I know that on any given day, there's people tuning in, and there's people that are these days sitting on the lawn that may not know me. My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Give it up for yourselves because you're amazing. And I really do feel that. I, I feel like I'm, I'm one of the most blessed men in the whole world because I get to be a part of this church and I, and I really do love it. I really do. I really do. Our mission is Say it with me if you know it, or type it in if you know it, is to be a lifeline by leading people to becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. That's our mission. That's what we do. That's what we're all about, and we rally together to do that. I believe whether you're watching online or whether you're watching from the parking lot, wherever you're at, whether you're watching this a week from now, did you hear me? Like, this message is going out, but it's not me that prepared it. It's God prepared it with, th through me God, through me, because he has something, a message for you of hope, encouragement, and love that he wants to speak into your life. And if you believe that with me, say amen. Amen. Amen, amen means let it be done, and it actually activates our faith. And did you know you have some control over that? You can say, amen, let it be done. I want this message to impact me. I want this to make a difference in my life. And we can take a step of faith to do that. I hope from the moment you stepped onto this campus or tuned in, I hope that you felt loved and accepted. So from all of us here at Lifeline, welcome to church and welcome 
home. Today we're going to conclude our series called Living on Purpose. This is the very last message. Everybody say, oh. Oh, you're like, get to the next one. It's cool. It's cool. We're going to go to another series soon. I got you. I got you. I got you. And in this series, we've been talking about how renewal starts with removal. Everybody wants renewal, but nobody wants to let go of some things, seems like. But we learn that letting go actually leads to getting, those, getting to those new heights. Last week, we talked about fasting. And if you haven't been taught about fasting before, I am deeply sorry. Go back a week ago, and I try and break it down and answer all the questions you could possibly have. And it's not too late. If you missed last week and you just didn't get the memo, go to our website, lifelinelodi.com. And right there on the front, there should be a, a fasting guide that helps you through the different kinds of fasts, a complete fast, um, which if you're new to fasting, I don't exactly recommend. But there's partial fast, selective fast, and there's even something called a soul fast where maybe a way to, for you to get involved is just, I'm going to give up something. I'm going to give up social media. I'm going to give up my phone for a period. I'm going to give up something. And some of you are thinking, give up my phone. <gasps> I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Well, that's how your soul feels. Because it can't breathe. Because we're filling it full of the news and, and, and all kinds of media. And that's how your soul feels. <gasps> I can't breathe. Fasting lets our soul breathe. It starves the things of this world and it feeds our spirit. That's what fasting is. And so we talked about that last week. Go back and check it out. Next week, I got a very special friend coming in to minister to you. Um, his name is Tyler Edder, Pastor Tyler from Stockton. Come on, give it up for him. He's not even here yet. Give it up for him. He might be like checking his eye like, how are they doing over there? I'm going to be like, but I want you to honor him so well. Invite a friend. Um, he's he's going to bring such a life-giving message that you really don't want to miss this. And it's going to be a great opportunity to, to bring a friend, maybe who's never been to church, uh, because he's just such a great teacher, such a great leader, and I cannot wait for him to come. But today, 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 as we conclude this series, allow me to get to the point. We're all sick. A amen. We're all sitting, you're like, no, I'm not, just, I'm not gonna let that be done. I'm not saying amen to that. Good, that's actually, that's all right. But let me tell you the truth, we are. We're born sick. Let me, let me rephrase that, we're born sick. It's in, our, it's in our DNA, it's in our heritage. King David wrote in the Bible, from my mother's womb, I was a sinner. From the moment I was conceived. Man, I, I, we are born into this. Since Adam and Eve, we are, we're born with something that we need to overcome. A lot of people don't realize that, if, if, especially if you weren't raised in church or don't know uh, the Bible, or the Bible's never been taught to you. This might be a foreign concept, a new concept, but let me tell you, it's, if, you if you even, you put your own logic on it, it, it checks out. It checks out. We're born this way. It's in our heritage. But when we give our lives to Jesus, that begins a process of embracing and taking on the very righteousness of God himself in Christ. Amen. That's a great place to say amen. For we are the righteousness of God when we are in Christ. That is like the gospel. Like, you're good. You're all set. I taught it to you. There it is. So we have an issue. We're all sick. And it's something that we, on this side of heaven, that's a very churchy way of saying, until we die, this is something that we need to constantly keep in check. And that's something that fasting deals with, really, that we, you, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. You live in a body. And the body is something that we always kind of have to fight against. And because the, the body wants to do what? The body wants to eat bacon cheeseburgers. Yeah. Amen. The, the body wants to go to sleep. And the body doesn't want to wake up. And the body wants candy. And the body wants to do, well, some other things. So the body is something that we consistently need to keep in check because it wants things that our spirit knows it's not right. It's not right. And it's something that we consistently need to keep in check. So we have this issue where we're sick. We have a sin nature that we actively need to overcome. And with that sickness comes selfishness. Selfishness. We're zeroing in on what we want to deal with today. And I can prove that we're all born selfish. Just look at any newborn baby and any toddler. Oh my goodness, all of my messages talk about toddlers. Why? Because I have two of them in my house and I love them so much. But you know what one of their favorite things to say is? Mine. You got it. Mine. That's mine. 
that's my, that's mine, and that's mine, and that's mine. How dare you have anything that is better than, that's mine. Take it from you. And I, I watch this on a consistent level. A consistent basis. Every single week we go out there and we hang out with our neighbors and, and do the different thing. Properly social distance and everything. And I watch these toddlers with their toys and they're playing. But the minute they see something someone else has, oh, that's mine over there. Oh, that's mine over there. And next thing you know, they're sitting on a pile of stuff. They can't even play with it all. Why? Because we don't have to teach selfishness. What do we need to teach our children? Generosity. It needs to be taught. It needs to be ingrained. It needs, it's something we, hey, no, 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 no. Emma and Evan, those are my kids. I'm, t- I'm talking to them in my mind. L- open your hands and you're grasping, but open them up a little bit. Open them up. Favorite saying is mine. We don't need to teach them selfishness. We need to work on generosity. And the one thing that helps and the thing that the Bible talks about the most that helps is realizing that stuff is not yours. It's not yours. Like, I know you're, like, I'm wearing these clothes. I know I drove here in a car. But I've come to a place in my life where I know it's not mine. None of it. None of it. It's not mine. It's his. If anything, he's given me management over some things. You might hear the word stewardship if you've been around a long time in churches and stuff. But I, I'm aware that not everyone has And so it's management. God has given me management over a certain set of resources, but it's not mine. So I can live like this. We're going to talk about this a lot today. I can live like this. It's only mine because God gave it to me. And there's only one explicit command that talks about what to do with what we have been given management over. And it's called tithing. Okay. So before I lose every single person in my audience, before I launch into this uh, episode today, you need to know that I've I've been a tither. I'm going to talk about what that means. Maybe you don't know what that means, um, but you need to know something about me. I have a crazy testimony in like every area, okay? But since I got saved, basically, you need to know about me that I have always, always kind of done this. This is not something that I... I'm not coming from a place where I've struggled with this and overcame it. I want to be totally upfront with you. I've always, since I got saved, I've basically always done this because God broke me and I had nothing at all. And I knew it's just because of where I came from that even my first job, uh, one of my first jobs since I got saved and moved to this area, I worked at Coco's. Come on, who knows that Coco's used to be where Black Bear is. I'm talking specifically, you may be watching in Indiana right now, but up here in Lodi, y'all know that used to be Coco's, and we're all glad that it's Black Bear now. Amen. I ate there the other day outside. It's delicious over there. I worked at Coco's for a while and wore those, the little cute aprons. You know the ones they make the dudes wear? It's like down to here. Yeah, I wish they made them longer. They just didn't. It was just like this little tiny apron. Man, it was like an act of humility dressing in my uh, uniform over there. But I got this little apron. And what I would do, every waiter knows, is you stuff that thing full of ones. And every single table that gets done, they give you three ones here, four ones there. And at the end of the night, I would have a handful, like a fistful of ones. Sounds like a country western. Fistful of ones. Ones, not... Okay, never mind. It was a fistful of ones, and and what I would do at the end of the night is I would slap them on the table, count them all out. All right, all right. 67 ones. And what I would do is I would one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those ones and set it aside. Ever since I was a baby believer, I was setting aside 10% to God. I was was doing, I've always done it. But what you need to know about that is that I've always been blessed. Oh, Always. So when I talk about the sickness and the cure, like with this issue, and I know it's kind of rare, it would be easier for me if I, if I was able to uh, share the common, common kind of problem that people have with this, that, you know, there's like this kind of back and forth thing. It'd be easier for me if I had a testimony like this, but I want to be forthright with you. I've always, I've always done it, but I've always experienced the blessing that's associated with it. Always, always have, always have. My testimony is this, I've always embraced the cure, so I never suffered the sickness. Like my, my, my marriage, my family, my ministry, my career, everything is felt like it's just been on a straight path. And 
It's not that I've never had any challenges. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that there was something. If I look back and, and use my, my hindsight, I can say, man, my, my testimony is different than a lot of people's. And so what I want to bring forth to you, that there's maybe, maybe there's something to that. Maybe there's something to that. It's like I had the, the reason why you're going to hear me talking so strong like this, because I feel I have the cure of what so many people are struggling with day to day. I saw the news recently, man, more unemployment's going out. And there's like, everybody's looking for, what am I going to do about my money? And I'm saying, I know, I know what to do. I know where the answer is. And so if I seem excited about it, it's because I've experienced the cure to something and I'm desperate to give it away. Like, man, just try it. Oh, I'm getting so ahead of myself. It's okay. It's okay. Say amen online. I need to hear you online, and I need to hear you in house. Say amen, man. This is, a, this is like 47% better than y'all responding to me right now. It's going to be okay, but not just because I experienced it. This is not a message about, hey, do this because I went through it. No, 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 no. That would be a poor message indeed. What I want to share with you today is it's because God made some promises to you. He, he made them to you. He made you some promises. And they are, they're big time, man. Like, they're good. And how many of you know, I can go through something, and you might go through something totally different. If I preached you a message based on my experience, that would be weak. Because you may or may not go through that. But if I preach you a message based on what God's word promises to us, that's strong. That's strong, and that carries weight. So don't look for a promise from me. Like, I'm shouting it, right? I'm excited about it. I, I think you're going to be blessed by it. But what you should be more excited about is that God promises it. If you have your Bibles with you, I'd love for you to turn them to Malachi 3. Malachi 3 is the last book in the Old Testament. Just right of center. Just right of center. So open your Bible to the middle and flip a few over to the right. Who am I kidding? Most of you on your phone anyway. We're on you version two. All the scriptures are there for you. It's made very, very easy, all the notes and all the scriptures. But if you got your Bible, I've got some, some underlining that you could do today. I've got some circling, some certain words that really stand out about this passage that are very important. So let's go ahead and start. In Malachi 3, let's start with verse 6. Verse 6. It says, I, the Lord, do not change. Leave that up there, but I want to talk about it. Notice that this is not simply Malachi. I know it's titled Malachi, but it's not Malachi talking. It's Malachi the prophet speaking on behalf of the Lord. The Lord is giving him a message, and he's, so he's speaking as if he's the Lord. He's not the Lord. He's, he's just hearing exactly what God is saying and speaking it. So he's saying, I, the Lord. And then as we move on, you'll see that it says over and over and over again, it says, says the Lord Almighty. I, I don't know, I, didn't, I forgot to count, but it's like, let's just guess, 10 times, 10 times, says the Lord Almighty, blah, 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 says the Lord Almighty, blah, 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 says the, he says it over and over and over again, as if to remind us, this is not a message from a man. A preacher didn't write this. A, a prophet didn't write this. God is speaking here. I, the Lord, do not change, so you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Quick question, why, why would we get destroyed? Why, what is going on here? Let's go on to verse 7. He says, ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees, and you have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you. He says, look, leave that up for just a second. Leave that up right below me. He's saying, God is speaking through the prophet, through the preacher, you've left me. You don't care about, he's essentially saying, you don't care about what I've said about your life. I've told you some things and you've left me. You've turned from me. And another translation for that word, what is it? What is it? It's decrees. Another translation is ordinances. Ordinances. I think the new King James says ordinances. An ordinance is an ordinary practice. This is something that all of God's people, this is written to Jews, the nation of Israel, the people of God, and this is saying, this is supposed to be ordinary. This is supposed to be just regular. This is supposed to be just normal living. You've turned away from normal living, my ordinances. And then it goes on to say, but you ask, how? How? Leave that up for a second. How are we to return? Most of you listening right now might say the same thing. I, I gave it up to you, like I told you what the topic was about. 
But if I just read this and I said, hey, man, we've turned away. Most of you sitting here and sitting outside and watching online are like, I'm here, aren't I? What do you mean I've turned away? I'm listening. Like, what more am I expected to do except show up? Right? Like, I'm here listening. This is it, right? I've, I've done it. I'm serving on the dream team. I'm sitting in the seats. I'm, I'm listening online. I'm saying amen. Like, what? how am I supposed to return? I'm here. That's a great question. And he goes on to say this in verse 8. Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, excuse me? <laughs> how, what, how have I robbed you? And he says, in tithes and offerings. In tithes and offerings. Notice how God sees it. If you don't do this, you're turning away. You aren't bringing it, then you're stealing it. I want to pause right now, and I hope that you haven't left yet. And I want to talk for a second to the newcomer and to the visitor. I want you to notice that Malachi is speaking to the nation of Israel right now. That doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to everyone. I'm just saying that the, the command as it goes out very explicitly is for the followers of Jesus, the people who call themselves followers of Jesus, the ones that are inside of that camp. At the time, it was just Jews. Now it's Jews and Gentiles grafted together. We're all in this together. But you're thinking, man, this, is, this seems kind of strong. This seems a little strong. And I, and I, I wrote it down and I want to encourage you Anybody who's visiting or new, this is intended for the people of God. But does this message apply to you then? Yes. Because if you're learning, we're learning what it means to give our lives to Jesus. And it's not a, you know, we don't do bait and switches around here. I, I want to be very forthright. Like, this is something that the people of God, when we give our lives to Jesus, when I, let me put it in the personal. When I gave my life to Jesus, it wasn't for a, like a burn card, you know? You know, a burn card is... You know, I don't want to go to hell or anything, so I guess I'll raise my hand. And, you know, I'm not really going to change anything else, you know, because that would be lame. I'm just going to get out of jail free, but I'm going to continue. No, when I gave my life to Jesus, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to trick people into coming to Christ. I want to let you know that when we give our lives to Jesus, that means we truly gave our lives to Jesus. When I gave control of my life to Jesus, that means I gave my marriage to Jesus, that means I gave my career to Jesus. If he wants me to change it, changed. Do you know what I'm saying? I gave my life to, I didn't compartmentalize what I gave to Jesus. I gave my finances to Jesus. I gave my health. I gave my hobbies. If God says, quit playing golf so much, man, done. I don't need anything like I need to be fully surrendered to Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so, this does apply to everybody who's watching because I don't think you would be watching if you weren't interested in at all about what it means to follow Jesus. It means, man, we, we turn it over. We turn it over. This is not a fire and brimstone. This is just an honest message. It's honest. I want to let you know, Matt, we give it. We give ourselves. We give ourselves. And so I'm not forcing anybody to do anything. But I want to be forthright and honest with you, man. But when we give our lives to Jesus, we mean it that way. I gave my life to him. So let me tell you, let me just teach you just a quick moment about the word tithe, because I think that word also is a word that we don't hear in our common language. The word tithe, translated from Hebrew, is ma'aser. Ma'aser. Let's put it up on the screen. Ma'aser means 10th part. It literally means a 10th part, 10%. That's that is all it means. It is so simple, and there's other words that sound just like it that mean 20%, 30%, but the word that they use for tithe means 10%. So I might just use that word for the rest of this message. Bring the whole tenth. Bring the whole 10%, because that's, that's what it's referring to is a tenth part of what you earn. So another way to read that is how are we robbing you, God, in the 10% and the offerings? It makes it sound like we should be doing both, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's, let's read on about the, the negative side of what happens when we turn away from God with this. Now, verse 9 says this. You are under a curse, your whole nation. Bummer. <laughs> that's, not, that's not good. You're under a curse, your whole nation, because you're robbing me. I know this sounds severe, but it goes on. Just trust me. It gets better. It gets a lot, lot better. It's not just a sin to, to neglect this. 
If it was a sin, that would be bad enough for me. I'd be like, all right, well, all right, I'm not going to do it then. But neglecting this actually brings a curse over your life. A curse, if I could just simply describe it to someone who doesn't know about the spiritual aspects of things yet. A curse is like a dark cloud. It's like a, a wind in your face that's holding you back. There is something spiritual that you can't see that is literally holding you back from being able to accomplish things that you should sensibly be able to accomplish. It's like a wind in your face adding an hour onto your flight in life. That's what a curse is like. It's something I can't, it's like, man, the wind is just, I just don't, I should be able to get this promotion. I, sh I don't see why I'm not able to just like buy a house right now. I don't see why I shouldn't be able to do this, to do that. And it's not just financial. Believe me, it's not just financial. This area, I have a very, there's a very powerful testimony I'm going to share with you in just a moment. But it's like a headwind in life. You're under a curse, your whole nation, because, because you're not, because you're robbing me. <laughs> That's the problem. So let's get to the solution. Let's talk for a second about the solution. Verse 10. And notice he says, bring the whole tithe. Bring the, bring the whole tenth. Man, someone said like, oh, yeah, the tenth. Yeah, after these deductions, brother, I got you after the deductions. He said, I, God says, bring it, bring the whole thing. It leads me to believe that they may have been finding shortcuts, finding little ways, you know, and it's all the integrity of the heart, you know, but he says it very specifically, bring the whole tenth. Ma'aser's tenth. Bring the whole tenth. Bring the whole ten percent into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Notice there's a reason for it. How, how many of you like Lifeline Church? You like coming here? You like the messages? They're life-giving. You know, it's food. It's nourishment. That there may be food in the house. And listen to this. This is arguably one of the coolest things right here. He says, test me in this, which he says nowhere else. He says, nowhere else. God is speaking. It's not Malachi, it's God. He says, test me in this. Well, that changes everything, doesn't it? There's a lot of places in the Bible where God says, you know what, just do it. <laughs> but nothing, do it. You're not supposed to do that. Knock it off. You're killing yourself. Stop it. But he says, he, he says something different in this area. I don't know why exactly, but he does. And it's beautiful. He says, test me in this and see that I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. He says, test me. And he says, you're not going to be able to store it yourself. You will be forced to give it away because you won't be able to keep it all yourself. I'm going to bless you so hard. <laughs> I can't think of another way to say that. It's weird. I'm going to bless you hard. I'm going to bless you so hard that you can't keep it for yourself. You absolutely, positively cannot keep it for yourself. It's like he's saying, don't believe me? Try it. Test me. Think I won't come through for you? Not only am I going to come through for you, but I'm going to bless you so hard. It's going to be too much for you. You're going to have to share it. You won't be able to store it. And it's like God saying, and if you act now, because <laughs> he goes on in verse 11, if you act now, I'm going to prevent pests from devouring your crops. And the vines in your field will not drop their fruit before it's ripe. How many of you believe that this could be speaking in a, in a bigger way than just the farmers? Do you think this applies to people other than farmers? I know it does. Because the first descendants of, of Adam and Eve were Cain and Abel. Were Cain and Abel. All right? And I know that one was a rancher and one was a farmer. One brought cattle and one brought fruit. And Abel was able to bring the first portion. He was the rancher, wasn't he? Abel was the rancher. I forgot to study this out before I got here. Totally slack or move. Pastor, get, get your game together. But let me tell you this. Abel was the one that he brought it first. So this is way before the law even came. Abel brought it first. And came, Cain brought it in the process of time, the Bible says. In the process of time. Makes it sound like uh, what do I got? You know, like, oh, here comes the baskets. Hang on, hang on, what do I got here? That's what it makes it sound like. Cain and Abel makes it sound like that. And I believe, I believe with all of my being that this applies to no matter how you make your living, he's going to prevent pests from devouring your crops. And your, your vines will not drop their fruit before it's ripe. It's a good, this is a great message. Then all the nations are going to look at you and say, they're blessed. 
man, that person, that person's blessed. Man, they got their stuff, man. They, and where does it come from? It comes from bringing the whole tenth. God says, not only are you going to see increase, I'm going to prevent bad things from happening to your income. Not only are you going to see increase, let me say it again, but I'm going to prevent bad things from happening to your income. Um, let me tell you something about this church. Uh, this church gives over 15% of, of whatever comes in, we give it straight back away. And some of you were recipients of like little gifts, like we sent out gifts for your kids this last week if you were in the kids' church. We do different things like that. We do things for the community, whatever, whatnot. We, gi we give away. And let me just tell you, through this whole thing, the church has remained strong. This is not, the council did not come to me and say, oh, pastor, finances are really bad. You need to preach a message on tithing. <laughs> no, absolutely not. God has prevented pests from devouring our crops because we as a church have remained faithful in giving. It's powerful. This is powerful. And it's, this doesn't just apply, let me get to it. Oh, I cannot wait to share this testimony with you. <sighs> you see, this is an invitation to receive a blessing. This is not some kind of command. You're like, you know what? God is saying, you know what? You just need to do this and you ought to just suffer through it. What about this passage communicates that? Everything about this is like, man, turn back, and I am going to bless you really good. This is an invitation to receive a blessing. In, in plenty of ways, has, he made a, has God asked us to do things and to, to do just out of sake, and, and you know what? That's fine. Tell me whatever you want me to do, and I need no explanation, God. I will serve you anyways. You don't need to explain yourself to me. You don't need to prove yourself to me. No, 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 no. I'm going to serve you anyways. I've given my life to you. But in this area, God says, try it. Just, just try it. Just give it a try and see that I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven. In fact, at, at the church, we say it like this. We get to give. We get to give. We get to, tithing brings supernatural and spiritual breakthrough in not only your finances, but your entire life. And it's a privilege to do so. That's a privilege. That is not something that we can say, well, God, if I give, you have to do something. No, he doesn't have to do anything. But it is a privilege. We get to give. We get to give means, number one, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. Man, I get to bless people. I have, so I get to give. God is not asking his people to get the revelation of receiving a blessing. No, he's asking his people to catch a revelation of being generous and, and, and being thoughtful and wanting to provide for others. We get to give. And number two, we get to give is we get, we, I earn, like the more I earn, the more I get to give. Like I earn to give, I get, you know, like uh, grasp, I get so that I can give. Over our years, Tiffany and I have, and I do this, by the way, I forgot to mention. No, I didn't. I said it. I said it very clearly. But as soon as, every time we've seen increase in our family, like we've continued to bless God a little bit more through giving. Like we've just made it a part of our lifestyle. Tiffany was raised in it. Thank God for godly parents that, that teach their kids and, you know, you know, you give the quarter or the penny or whatever, and we do that in our children's church, you know, just, just teaching our kids to be generous. But I, I mean, I was raised with generous parents, but not, you know, in these, these kinds of things. But man, I'm just so grateful for Tiffany. So when we got married and, and we stepped forward in these things, we've committed that when we see increase, we don't just bump it up because it's a higher percentage. We actually increase the percentage, but that's just neither here nor there. We earn, when we earn money, it's a privilege to be able to give more. See, tight fisting, like I shared, tight fisting has adverse effects. Even if this verse wasn't here, that would still be true. Mentally, we think, and this is the, this is the main argument, I know, I know how to get more in my life. Keep more. <laughs> and you would be very logical for thinking that. No, pastor, if I give 10% of my income away, I will not have more. See, that's actually less. <laughs> if I give it away, I, I, I understand that. I, I know basic math. I know basic arithmetic. I know that's true. But it's, now don't, don't be insulted by this. That's basic child mentality. And I'm not saying you're childish if 
No, please don't hear that. I'm trying to make an illustration. Children, like my children, I know how to get more. I hoard. If I hoard, I get more. If I hoard, I get more. But what my kids don't understand yet, that everything they have comes from me. You know what I'm saying? It's all mine. It's, you think it's yours. Like, this is my dolly. Sort of. Only because I gave it to you. <laughs> Only because I gave it to you. And when I see you t snatching your dolly out of someone else's hands who's playing with it, that doesn't really inspire me to shower you with more toys. But a child only sees what's right in front of them. They don't see the bigger picture of how is all this really coming my way? You understand what I mean? And like my kids, if they had more vocabulary, they would say, none of you jerks lay a hand on my toys because they're mine. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me show you. I asked my, my friend to come up here. Come on up here. I want to show you something. Um, and we're going to see if this works or not. Um, this is uh, Brother Daniel right here who led us in worship. Come on. Can we give it up for this man? He's got range. Ah, range, like hardcore range. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to zoom out for a second. Now I'm gonna try a little illustration here. Come in a little bit closer so that we can get some light on you. We're gonna try two experiments. Now, the, 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 first, the first is I want you to, and these are hot commodity right now. You know, coins are outlawed right now. No, that's a lie. Here, put these in your hand, and this is, this is your provision. Now, I want you to, to try and hang on to as much as you can, all right? Hang on to that. Now, I'm gonna, in this illustration, I'm gonna play God. I've been waiting for that. Now, I'm going to play God. I'm, I'm trying to bless you. I want to bless you. God does want to bless you, by the way. And I want you to try and catch as much of this blessing as you can, holding on to what you have. Ready? Go. Catch. Catch. No, no, don't. I see what you're doing. Keep it closed. Hold on to what you got. Hold on to what you got. How many did you get to keep? Um, nothing. Um, nothing. Now, I want you to live. I want you to now, now try again. Now try again, and you can move it around, but I don't want you to close it, because how many of you know blessings come in, can come in, and we can go back to a closed hand? Keep that hand open. Keep that hand open, okay? Holy, that was really good. You kept all of that catch right there. Let's try this one. Okay, some fell off. Some fell off, but you still got more. Some fell off, but you still got more. Some fell off, but you still got more. Hold on, let's do, let's do a big one. Oh, some fell off, but you still got more. Let's, listen to this. L that is a good, that's a good haul right there. That's like a hot commodity right there. Let me tell you something. In order to catch the blessing that God wants to give us, we need to learn to live with an open hand. We need to learn to live with an open hand. Now, is some going to spill out? Absolutely. That's the point. That's the point. But the more we learn to live with an open hand, the more God can continue to bless us. And as soon as that hand closes, why would I keep throwing it away? Do you understand what I'm saying? Thank you so much for that. Catch the blessing means we need to learn to live with an open hand. Let's learn to live with an open hand hand because God wants to throw a blessing your way but he wants to be able to use you as a vessel to be able to transition his funds all throughout I mean that's what we're doing as a church and that's what he's teaching his church you 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 are the capital C church you are the church we are the church we are his people God wants to continue to bless his church but a lot of us in this season I believe this message is timely because a lot of us in this season we've we've become and, you know, I, I understand, but we've become fearful. We were like, oh, man, I better hang on. I better hang in there. I don't know how things are going to work. I don't know how things are going to happen. And so we begin to, man, and I totally get it. I totally get it. We begin to close up a little bit and we begin to be a little less generous. And we begin to hold back things that God has clearly told us to do. And we say, no, 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 I got to keep, I got to keep, I got to keep. And, and we run into that problem of, man, we're not, we're not able to catch. We're not able to receive because we've closed our hand. What baseball player is like, man, I caught one ball, better keep my glove closed. <laughs> that wouldn't work. Man, a football player needs to open wide to be able to receive. Do you understand? Like, we need to catch the blessing by living with an open hand. You need to know that what I'm, 
what I'm trying to, to give you today, this is a gift to you. This is not something that we need. This is not something that the church needs. We're good. Nothing needs to change. <laughs> like with our, nothing needs to change. This is something that I want for you. This is something that I believe is going to bless your life. This is wisdom and knowledge from God's word today that will be a blessing to you so you can put it into practice. Here we go. Number one, test, test God with tithing. Test God with tithing. He said it was okay to test him, and so I'm saying it's okay. And this church says it's okay to test him. He, he said we can test him. For a long time, we've been doing something called the, the, the tithe challenge. And if you were uh, sitting in the if you were sitting in house, you'd be able to grab a little envelope out in front of you, and it says the tithe challenge right on, and it explains that we'll let you for three months test God. It's pretty weird. I, I know it's well, we're kind of weird anyways. We try things out, but there's been fruit from it. There's been fruit from it. We we let people for three months, like we will just hang on to it because we're 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 okay. We don't like need that. You could tithe for three months. And we'll consult with you and we'll help you build the budget so that you can do it. We've done this for years. And you can test God. And if God doesn't come through for you, if he doesn't like make a way for everything to work out, and we believe he'll show up miraculously because he said in his word he would. It's not a promise from us. It's a promise from him. And we've to date never had to return anything to anybody because every single person who's participated in that and finished, you know, life is hard. Life can be tough. And so if you finish, we, God shows up. And if it doesn't work out, we'll return it all. We've never to date had to return any because God has showed himself faithful. But you know what? We, we believe that if God said to test him, then we could actually do so. God says, test. I, here's the story I was so excited to share with you. I don't know how many years, it was probably four, five years ago, back when the church was called Faith Generations. That was some years ago. We weren't Lifeline Church just yet. We, we changed the name and we changed like the, the vision and we kind of we got a restart and had some fun. And, you know, we, sometimes it's good to get a fresh vision from God and be a lifeline in the community. I think we were called Faith Generations back then. And this woman, this homeless woman living in her van started showing up to church she lived in her van, and she became a faithful member of this church. She showed up every single Sunday. She never missed. She never missed. And you wouldn't really know she was homeless by, by, by looking. In fact, I didn't know right away either. But she started coming, and she's very faithful. Uh, she's a little bit on the, no, she's a lovely lady. And she came in, and I went out there one day to talk to her in the parking lot, and I looked in her van. I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You live in here? Got, she had a mattress in there. I'm like, girl, you, you live in here? She said, yeah, I, I'm, I'm all right. You know, it's, it's cool. You know, I stay, I stay pretty clean, and I got my, my rounds that I make, and it's, it's okay, Pastor. It's okay. I'm like, wow, that's, I didn't even know, because I didn't know she, because she just carried herself really well. She became a member of the church, a faithful member of our church. Tiffany remembers this. She's watching from home today. You remember this, too, and this is right when we introduced the Tithe Challenge, and I brought a message just like this one, and next thing you know, I get a card in the giving box with the tithe challenge filled out. And I look, and, and here she is. And I'm like, all right, okay, this is interesting. I've got a homeless woman, basically, a lovely lady, lovely. Part, like, I, I miss her. She, she goes to a different church now. She lives out of town, but the story goes there. And I'm, I'm looking at this car. I'm like, all right, well, you know, I don't know what to expect. And so we talk, and we get her budget in line, and we're, and we're like, there wasn't anything to talk about. And she just said, well, I'm just going to bring it. I'm going to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse and I'm going to wait for God to do something special. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's see what he does then. You know, I'm right there with her. Let's see what she does. And next thing you know, the tithe comes in and, and you know, I see it and it's like $62.72. How many know that's like, you know a tithe when you see one? Because it's like $62.73. It's not... $65. No, it's exact. You said 10%, Pastor, and I'm not going a cent above that. You know what I'm saying? It's exa it was exactly 10%. And I'm like, hold up, $62? Man, that's $620. Girl, where you get that money from? She's like, that's my Social Security, Pastor. That's, that's what I got. It's not enough to get a place or anything, but it's, and I'm like, oh, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. A couple weeks goes by. I see another one come in. 
$134.72. I'm like, hold on a second. That's like a thousand something dollars. <laughs> and, I, and I talked, I'm like, what, what, what happened? She's like, oh, I got a job. Like it, like it was no big deal. She's like, oh, I got a job. Where at? In and out. In and out. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, they pay me like $12 an hour. I said, and you're not thrilled by this? Dude, this is amazing. Okay, fast forward like a month. She's working in and out. She's, she's got an apartment. She's, she's off the streets. I mean, this is in the course of like six weeks. Fast forward a little bit more. Next thing you know, and she was estranged from her family. She didn't really, wasn't really connected. And what happened was now, this, this woman, not only is she not homeless, but she lives in the Bay Area, rent-free, with her estranged family, a family that she was separated from since she's been on the street. And when she was on the street and coming in, sometimes I did smell a little alcohol. She drank a little bit, and that has something to do with the estrangement. But you know what? Now, and she checks. She checked in every once in a while. She goes to a sister church over there in, in the Bay Area. So I watched a woman take the tithe challenge and go from being homeless, living in her van at this church. Now she lives in one of the most expensive cities in the world, maybe the nation, one of the most expensive, rent-free, with a family that she didn't even have contact with before. How many of you know we serve a good God? And if we test him and put him to the test, he is faithful to come through. I'm trying to tell you, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. And some of you are thinking right now, well, I'm not homeless. Yeah, I know. What might God do with you? If he can do that with a homeless woman, then what? You know, let's just take a second right there. Right there. I want you to imagine. Come on, let's put that up on the screen. I want you to take a moment and think. What might God do in my life if I take the challenge? If he can do everything I just said, and I watched it happen, if he can do everything like that with a woman living in her van that has to take the edge off with a bottle, you see, this is more than finances, y'all. This is bigger. This, this has to do with our, our servantship to Jesus. This has to do with giving full control. And in our culture, in our society, this tends to be one of the last pieces that's missing. I see people, man, they, if, if it's not money, it's usually sexual things. Like, man, why can't I have sex outside of marriage? Or why can't I do this? Or why can't I do that? That and money tend to be, in our culture, our society, some of the last steps before someone really jumps into a relationship with Jesus. All I'm saying is, in, in, the, in the other areas, there's no, there's no promise. There's no place where God says, hey, try it. God does say, taste and see that the Lord is good, but he doesn't say, test me in this thing right here, the tenth. Test me in this and see that I won't throw open the floodgates of heaven. Man, the most powerful thing, the last time I talked to this woman, it's been a little while now, but the last time I talked to her, you know what she was overflowing about? Not that she was rolling in dough, not that she's living in the most expensive part of the country, not any of that. She says she gets to be with her family every day she got her family back because she took a tithe challenge look i'm i'm no prosperity guy i'm just saying god has some very specific things to say about this area he said it not me he said it not me take a minute take a minute man think about it what might god do why don't you just close your eyes for a second every, Everybody watching online, if you're driving, don't do it. But if you're, if you're here or if you're watching online, just close your eyes for just a second. Just humor me. What might break through in your life? What is the thing that you've been, man, why won't this thing go away? Why won't this issue go away? Why won't this breakthrough happen? There's something going on here, but... What might happen in your life? 
if I trust God enough to put him first in this area. You can open your eyes. Complete this statement with me if you know it. Everybody online, everybody here. God so loved the world that he... God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? His first son. His only son at the time. Reminds me of Abel, the rancher. He gave his first before he had any more. That's interesting. See, there's an act of trust that's involved. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. And that's, that's kind of exactly the step of faith. But I want you to think about something. God gave his son, and now we are called sons and daughters. But if God would have never gave his son, he wouldn't have any more sons and daughters. So in that way, it's, it's kind of reminiscent to this act of giving the first portion so that there can be more. When we embrace giving, we embrace the very nature of God. He's a giver. He gave his first and he gave his best. In some ways, Jesus is like the Father's first fruit, first fruit offering. Except it wasn't, the percentages don't match up. The blessing that we receive in return is not as tangible. Like my friend in the church, she, she got much more than this. She got something that she was desiring here. She was separated from her family. She got her family back. Who would have guessed that? Who would have guessed that? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He led the way in giving and calls us to give our lives as well. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Father, thank you for your word that teaches us, that encourages us, that shows us a way that's better than our own thinking, Lord. I know this message can be very difficult for some, and even for me, it's hard to deliver sometimes just because there's so much wrapped up in it. There's so much emotion wrapped up in it. There's so much... There's so much that we perceive that we can lose, but Lord, I pray that as your word goes forth, it would not return void. Lord, that as your word goes out, we would see the reality that you are looking for ways to bless us. You're looking for ways to prosper us, not just for our own sake, for us to keep, but so that we can prosper others, so that we can bless others. Lord, I ask that we would see the reality, the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, who died on a cross for all of our sins and made the painful sacrifice to give what was first, his life. Lord, I ask our hearts to be open to receive this and to, to walk in obedience, Lord, and I pray that, Lord, that this would be an encouragement to all who hear it. If any of us are, are looking for a relationship with God and ready to turn our lives over to Jesus, the way that I've described it, our whole, our whole lives, our whole lives, whether in the house or online today, you're saying, you know what? I've been waiting for this. I've showed up to this message. I've showed up to this service. I've showed up to church, whether online or in person, to say, I'm, I'm ready. And this is exactly the message I needed to hear because I'm ready to turn my whole life over, not part of it. I've tried that. I've tried living partly my way, partly God. It's no, it's no good. But if you're ready to give your life to Jesus, imperfections and all, mistakes and all, let me tell you, God can accept a mistake. And he's ready to work with us. And he's ready to, to help us through. But if you're ready to give your life to Jesus, mistakes and all, imperfections and all, I just want you to, to lift your hand. I'm not even going to, you know, it's, this is between you and God right now. 
to say, God, I want to give my life to you. I want to give my whole life to you. Maybe you've kind of been walking with him, but you want to really walk with him and say, God, I'm ready to give my whole life to you. Whether online or in person, say, that's me, or raise your hand, or put a hand, or message our church. Come on, we are ready to receive you. And for anyone who wants to do that today, come on, let's, can we just all pray a prayer together? Let's all just repeat this prayer right after me. Say, Father God, I give my whole life to you. My whole life to you. My whole life is yours. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for my sins that I could attain righteousness through him. Not on my own, but through your son who suffered for me. Thank you for the sacrifice. And I give you my heart today with all my imperfections and all my shortcomings. Fill me with your spirit and show me the path I should walk. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate everyone who made that decision today. It's a good day. It's a good day every time somebody gives their life to Jesus. Let me just tell you, um, there's a couple next steps before we go. Um, if you received this, the, the topic of this message today, our next step of giving, I really think you should go home and build a budget first. Um, I think I missed that part of my message. I kind of had to jump through because I, um, I lingered a bit, but that's okay. God wanted to kind of kind of tune in on something special today, but that's all right. I forgot to mention it, but in this next step, uh, you should really, if you did receive this message today, um, if you're looking at that going, oh man, I better hurry up and give. No, no, hang on a second. I, what I really would like you to do is, is to take the challenge and, and, and move into that step sensibly. And I want you to move into that step and really go home. And what I forgot to mention in my message is, I'm going to go home and build a budget now. I'm going to go home and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change some things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go home and I'm going to put God at the top of my list. Financially, I'm, I'm going to put him first and I'm going to build my budget around that. Are you going to have to let some things go? Yes. Are you going to have to say goodbye to some things for a season? Probably. But you know what? It's totally worth it. And so please, uh, with this next step, some of you are ready to give already and that's great. Um, but please don't feel like, I was trying to get you to some hurry up thing. I really would like you to, to fill out one of those cards, especially if you've never um, taken that, that, that full step. Um, please reach out to us. We're not too busy. <laughs> reach out to us. Send us a message. Send us an email. Fill out one of those cards. Fill it in. But if you are ready to give, there's a few different ways to do that. And they're up there on the screen. Texting 84321, Facebook donate button, online, lifelineloader.com, or you can mail to 500 Park Street. 500 Park Street. I, for, I forgot what city we were in. Lodi, California, 95240. Got it. Got it. Got it. Growth track to join the team is our next step after that. We'd love to have you on the team. If you'd like to join the, the musician team or the production team or the setup crew or the outreach crew, we've got a lot of different ways for you to serve right now. And if you'd like to be a part of blessing our community, growth track is the way to do it. We teach you all about what joining a church is like, and we would love to walk you through. We do growth track every Sunday after church. And if you sign up, we will actually do it around your schedule via Zoom. So it's never been easier to join the team or if someone you know who's missing today um, wants to join the team, let them know. Hey, come on, I'll do it with you. I'll do it with you. Come on, let's go to Zoom and do growth track together. And it's an amazing thing. Last part, hey, we're the church, right? Right, right, we're the church. So I would encourage you to be a lifeline this week. Be a lifeline this week. Find a way to bless others. Find a way to encourage others. There's acts of kindness cards on your chairs. If you need some, message the church, email the church, we'll get them to you. An act of kindness card is like, I want to buy your coffee and slip you a little Jesus loves you. You know, it's like a little, a little blessing and run situation. It's really fun. You should try it. It's really fun when the church starts acting like the church and blessing the city at large. And you're like, man, I don't know. Like I was having a rough day, so I prayed. I don't even know God is real, but God, if you're real, help me out. And then I got this weird card that said, Jesus loves you and bought my coffee. You just never know. You never know how an act of kindness can change a life. And then 
Obviously, sharing on social media um, is one way to share the love. Share the link is to share the love, and you never know who, who this might bless and change their life. If you're in person or out on the lawn, I'd like you to stand. I'm going to pray a blessing over you. Come on, everybody. Let's stand to our feet today. And even online, stand to your feet today. Open your hands up to receive a blessing. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray a blessing over every single person here. I, I pray a blessing over our finances, Lord. Uh, let's just start with that. Lord, as we put you first, Lord, as we seek your kingdom, Lord, I, I pray that everything else will be added to us if we seek you first in your kingdom, that everything else will be added to us, Lord, as we put you at the center, nay, put you on top, put you on the top of our list, Lord, I pray for blessings and people who are struggling, Lord, I pray that they would see the increase and they would see the, the benefit of really trusting God. Lord, I pray over the health of the church. And I've, I've heard many reports lately of, of people not feeling well and, and people suffering with sickness. Lord, I pray health over the church. I pray a, a supernatural protection over the church. As we're using our senses, Lord, I pray that you would step in, God, and, and do what we can't do. What, what precaution cannot help us with, Lord, I pray that you would step in and be our healer. Lord, by your stripes, we are healed is what your word says. And we still believe that's true in our lives. Lord, we believe that you can heal us. And so we're asking you to step forth and, and, and help anyone who's sick and encourage them, lift them up and bring them out of that sickness. And I pray that people who are sick would reach out and ask for that prayer that they need. And I pray for every relationship represented in the house today, every marriage, every parent, every brother, every sister, every child. Lord, I'm thanking you right now in the name of Jesus that every relationship would be Christ-centered and therefore blessed. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. And all God's people said, amen.